Welcome back everybody. I know it doesn't look like it, but winter's coming. Let's go over a pre-season checklist to make sure that your tractor and equipment is in order when the snow starts flying. So we just recently hit 100,000 subscribers. I wanna say thank you very much to everybody who follows along, it's greatly appreciated. You know, it's the interaction with all you guys down below and learning as we go and sharing information that makes us a joy to do. So thanks for sticking around. We're gonna keep it going with another giveaway from our channel sponsor today. So we are sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers, these right here. And today we're gonna to do a giveaway. We're gonna give away a set of wheel spacers to one lucky individual. We'll tell you how to win those later on. And you guys know what to do. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your machine, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Okay, so as those summer projects start winding down, you still have some work to do in the fall around the yard and the property but there's gonna be more downtime, you know, still some decent weather out there. I find it's a lot nicer to start working on my snow equipment and equipment preparation in general right now versus waiting for those frigid, you know, 30 degree, 20 degree, or even colder days out when nothing wants to work, your hands are freezing. I'm a natural procrastinator, but this is one of those things that I think I've learned my lesson on enough. I wanna get it done ahead of time. One of those jobs that's definitely easier to do now versus in the winter time is the touch-up paint, the degreasing, maybe the adjusting of the skid runner, skid shoes, maybe any hydraulics, tightening of uh, cables, but all sorts of temperature related tasks. And what I mean by that is if you wanna use some touch-up paint, right, you wanna do that when the, the paint can adhere best and that's gonna be in warmer conditions versus those cold temps. If you want to degrease your equipment, I know we just got in a 2305 with a snowblower on it and a lot of this equipment that happens, the exhaust off the tractor hits the backside of that snowblower and it's just covered in soot. You know, you might have some hydraulic hoses that just have oil buildup over time from being connected and disconnected. You know, we even added on some Outback Wrap, which is a form of hose management. So we had the six hoses or four hoses, something like that for our three-point snowblower. And this Outback Wrap is like a, a big sleeve or a cover that'll contain everything and make it so you don't have hoses laying all around as well. That's gonna be one of the partners that we work with where you can order directly from Outback Wrap. You can use code GWT, you're gonna save 10% off your order. So again, nicer weather, it's a lot easier for this type of stuff to be done. Paint's gonna adhere easier. If you're using degreaser and washing everything off, it's a lot nicer in warm weather versus cold. And even with the hoses, a little bit more pliable and flexible in the warmer temperatures. And now is also a good time to grease your equipment. So your PTO shafts on your blower, maybe you have a pivot point or some zerks on your your snow plow, whatever it is, it's a good time to hit it with grease. And again, you guys have seen Lube Shuttle, a totally different type of greasing system. You go to their website, you use code GWT, you save 5% off your order. Let's talk about those contact surfaces or the wear areas that are on your snow removal equipment. And this could be the skid runners or skid shoes. It could be your cutting edge on a snow blower, on a snow plow, on a snow pusher. But all those areas are, for the most part, replaceable. Unfortunately, you are gonna have some equipment that is not equipped with those replaceable edges. I really try to carry equipment that only has replaceable edges because it's really gonna prolong the life of the equipment overall by just having to replace one small part versus an entire piece of snow removal equipment. So three of the more common types of material are gonna be steel, rubber, and then UHMW or poly or plastic. You know, it kind of goes by a few different names there and there's some different variations of those plastic materials that are out there. There's gonna be different factors that come into play and I've done a video comparing each one of those in depth if you wanna check that out. Steel in general is gonna be your most durable but also your most abrasive. And the trade-off is it's gonna scrape the best or clear the snow better than anything else. But if you're on a paved surface or a concrete surface, maybe decorative stone, something you don't want to get damaged, then steel may not be the best option for you. I'll often recommend that folks look into either a rubber or a, a plastic edge. And you can also get the plastic skid runners that we sell for the snow pushers so that you can completely protect every point of contact, the skid runners and the edges. So if you do have maybe a brand new you know, concrete driveway or brand new asphalt driveway, you can really prolong the life of it. You're not gonna leave streaks and, and maybe rust strips or stains on there. And you can help prevent any chipping that may occur from a steel edge along a uneven surface or an expansion joint. 
So we do sell UHMW edges ourselves, or plastic edges. Uh, we're gonna sell those in different heights and different widths. So you can check that out. You can buy it per inch on our website. We can ship those UPS ground right to your house. That type of material is going to drill out very easily. You just add some stainless nuts, bolts, washers to it and bolt it on in place. It does not need a retainer bar like rubber normally does, which makes that a little bit easier to work with too. So for those of you that aren't familiar with snow equipment, if you do have replaceable edges on your plow or your pusher or your snow blower, more often than not, those are gonna be reversible so that if you wear down one side, you can just unbolt it from your snow plow, flip it over and wear down the other side. So you can get double the life and that's gonna be the same situation with our UHMW edges. So even if you are just using your bucket for snow removal, Again, I've done a video all about using your bucket for snow removal and if that's a good idea or not, but if you're going to, you might want to consider adding on a thick piece of plastic to the bottom of that, drilling it out, countersinking it, and that's going to not only protect your plowing surface, regardless of what material it is, but it's also gonna protect your bucket because those corners, if you're just using the bucket, will wear down unevenly, you know, and a bucket is designed to dig and hold material. So if that is what's riding along the surface, it's going to have an inclination to try to dig down and scrape and unintentionally cause damage to the concrete, the asphalt, the gravel, whatever it is. So even if you don't have a pre-drilled bucket, you may want to invest the extra time to drill it out and add on a nice thick piece of UHMW. You can take it off again in the spring when you're going back to summer work, but while it's on in the winter time, it could make the difference between protecting your driveway and your equipment. Okay, well, if you've plowed snow for any number of seasons, then you know that getting ballast weight on the back of your tractor to allow you to have some more weight to get traction to push along makes a big difference. Now there's some other really good reasons to have ballast weight on your tractor for counterweight, so to speak. Having that extra junk in your trunk can make all the difference of having some extra oomph behind a full snow pusher or a snow plow full of wet, heavy snow to keep you moving forward instead of sitting there spinning your wheels. Now there's a lot of kinds of ballast weight. That could be an extra attachment you have. It could be a ballast box. We're actually selling a Versa bracket, which is a weight bracket with a suitcase weight bundle now available on our website wheel weights, liquid ballast in your tires, you get the idea, the more weight you have on there, the better off you're gonna be. Now you're not gonna realize the full value or benefit of that additional ballast weight if you don't have the right tires on your tractor. Now I'm going on, I think it's season number three with my 1025 and the Carlisle Versaturfs. I'm going on season number two with my R14s on the big four series tractor, and it does make a significant difference in traction. However, swapping tires can be a pretty pricey proposition. So if you are buying a tractor new or you're due for a set of tires, that's a really good time to try to make that transition. If you have a really good set of tires that are already on your tractor, maybe you can look into selling those separately in the used market and recoup and offset a lot of the cost of the new tires. So if you want to get some more information on what might be the best tread pattern for your tractor, we did a whole video all about that last fall with five different tread patterns on tires, so make sure you check it out. Okay, well, if getting new tires is just out the window for you, there's a couple other things you can do depending on the type of surface that you're plowing. So a cheaper way to gain some additional traction if you are gonna be on an unpaved surface, so something like gravel or stone, is gonna be to use tire chains or maybe even tire studs. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't know a whole lot about either one of these. I haven't used either one. I haven't had a need to or the right application for it. I'm sure I will coming up out here at the property, but I do know one of the suppliers that I work with recommends putting tire studs in the front tires first First, seeing how that does for you and then moving on to the rear tires as well if needed. Now as far as chains go, I know those can make a huge difference, a night and day difference to folks when they're pushing snow or plowing snow. The downside with chains, and it's going to depend on your machine, is the fact that you may not have enough clearance between the inside of your tire and the wheel well to install those chains without getting a set of wheel spacers on there. Now there is going to be an option for rubber tire chains for the 261212 and some other garden tractor sizes. So the 261212 is going to fit your John Deere 1025s, your Kubota BX series. They're also going to have associated front rubber tire chains as well. Again, I haven't used these personally, but those tire chains, the rubber version are recommended for the asphalt or the concrete driveway. So if you have a really icy situation or some hills to go up and down, you may want to look into that. Now those rubber tire chains can be purchased right on Amazon so we'll put links down below to those. So if you want to get more information or see some how-tos on how to install chains on your tractor, GP Outdoors, one of the more underrated channels that's on YouTube, does a really good job. If you just browse his channel, you'll find some good videos all about installing chains, how to snug them up, 
I do believe he actually installed wheel spacers to gain that additional clearance on one of his tractors. And so that brings us to today's giveaway. We are gonna give away a set of Bora wheel spacers. Now, again, these are made in America. They have a lifetime warranty. You can get them in steel or aluminum one inch to six inches in width. Now there's gonna be some other considerations that you're gonna to need to make. If you have a mower deck on, what's the maximum width you want? Are you trying to match up a certain width with your attachments? A lot of variables, but we'll go over that. Whoever the winner is will help you out, get the right ones selected. They are a made to order item, so they're not gonna ship out right away, but we'll get you in the queue and get them built and get them on their way. So how do you win this amazing giveaway? Well, all you have to do is leave a comment in the YouTube video, this YouTube video, and let's have a little fun. In your comment, mention what tractor you own, the tractor make and the tractor model. We'll just get a good idea of who's watching this channel. So leave a comment in this video below. We're gonna give you until Sunday, October 3rd, 2021. If you leave a comment in the future, you're not gonna be entered. 12 noon Eastern time is when we're gonna do the drawing. So get your comment down below. We're not gonna to respond to any other comments in the video. Now this does apply to only the lower 48 in the USA. And when you win, we're gonna post something announcing the winner on the community tab on YouTube. We're also going to find your comment and reply to that in the YouTube video as well. We are gonna need you to verify your identity to link that you are the owner of that YouTube account. We'll grab your contact information, grab your shipping information. We'll get things going for you. So if you don't have a heated shop, that can also be a good time of year to service your machine. A lot of tractor manuals and a lot of equipment manuals in general will recommend different fluid weights for a summer or a winter application. Same thing with diesel even. If you can try to run your system out or low and then cycle in winter diesel if you need to, if you're in a colder northern climate, it's a good time to do so and start thinking about that in advance. Although it could still be a while before we start seeing winter diesel at the fuel stations. But to go along with that, we've covered this pretty extensively. You want to keep some anti-gel on hand. And if you don't have the winter diesel or if you do, either way, this can lower the gelling point or the freezing point of that fuel because there's gonna be wax essentially inside the diesel system and in thin fuel lines or where the, the fuel filter is at, those are gonna be the first points that are gonna to wanna to freeze up and gel up. And if that occurs, you're not gonna be able to use your machine. It's gonna be fuel starved. It's gonna be unusable. You're gonna to have to get your machine into a warm environment or maybe put a heater by it safely use caution with that, but you gotta get that gel to separate and go back down into a liquid form. Okay, so I want to emphasize the fact that anti-gel is a preventative measure. If you already have a gelled system, you need a completely different product. Anti-gel will not work at that point. Instead, you're gonna need something that's an emergency fuel treatment, something that you can pour in right away. It's gonna to get to work ungelling your system there so you can get back up in operation if you're not able to haul it into a warm environment to thaw out. So if you're looking for an anti-gel product, we have been working with Lube Shuttle, which makes some really good greasing systems, but they also make a nice anti-gel product. You can get 5% off your order on their website. We'll put a link down below. Use code GWT. So while you're there, make sure you check out those greasing systems. They are totally different than the norm what's on the market right now. As far as looking for the emergency treatment, we will put some links down below. If you don't have a store nearby, you can get that off of Amazon. It's good to have one of each on hand. Now, if you're like me, the older you get, the less you like being out in the cold. My big tractor is a four series and it's got a heated cab on there. I absolutely love it. If you're working with an open station tractor, there are gonna be some aftermarket cab companies that you can work with. It may be getting too late in this season to be able to get it before the snow flies, but there could be a chance, depending on your tractor model, that there could be an option available. So a substantially cheaper option, if you wanna look into that, is gonna be getting one of those seat heaters. And so most of these tractors anymore are gonna have a 12 volt convenience plug somewhere on them. And a lot of folks are getting seat heaters, like a, a seat warming pad that you might get for your car and just put that on there and sit on top of that. Now that's certainly not gonna be the same as a cab, but it could be enough to keep the chill away. So for those of you that have a cab, there's a few things you may want to look into. Something to keep that glass clear because it always starts to fog and freeze up come the cold weather. So whether you get some anti-fog for the inside, if you've never replaced your wiper blades on the front and the rear glass, now's the time to do it. And I guess this last one is really if you have an open station or a cab, but look into upgrading your lights. So if you have the halogen lights, I know a lot of the John Deere's are going to use 
one of two different options of LED light bulbs. A pretty cheap, easy way to improve the light. I'll tell you, I still have to do that on my 4720, but I've done that on my 1025. I've done that on a lot of my other tractors. I've had a lot of feedback from customers that maybe it doesn't increase the overall brightness of the light that it's putting out, but it's enough with the color change that you can just see a lot more easily, especially as these days get shorter, you're gonna be spending a lot more time in low light conditions. So we have found some pretty good bulb options for you, for all you John Deere owners, and a couple of the Kubota models too. You wanna to pull out a light bulb you have, take a look at the model number, take a look at the connection, just to make sure you're getting the right one. We'll put links down below to where you can buy those on Amazon. And last but not least, make sure you have plenty of shear bolts on hand. You snowblower owners know what I'm talking about. The last thing you want is to have the nor'easter blow through, you're halfway through your driveway one pass, and you're out of shear bolts. That'll really shear a guy off. Oh, and I forgot, we are gonna do some testing later this winter once that snow starts flying. We bought several different like non-stick or anti-stick anti Teflon type products. So we're gonna spray some strips of those onto our snow pusher. Give it a test, see how it does. Does it actually work? I know a lot of you guys have done that on your snowblower shoes to try to help prevent clogging, but some sort of a spray that you can put on there and prevent that buildup from occurring, let that snow and ice release instead. That's gonna wrap it up for us today. Make sure you do leave that comment down below if you wanna have a chance to win a set of your own Bora wheel spacers. I wanna thank you so much for taking the time to stop by. If you did enjoy the video, it would mean a lot to me. If you'd give a thumbs up, make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your tractor, you know where to go, goodworkstractors.com. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.